Thank you for your commitment to considering becoming a member of Pleasant Chapel Community Church. Uh, it's good that uh, we have this opportunity for you to use uh, this video uh, because you couldn't make the class or it was more convenient for you to do this portion of the class at home. It's great we can do that. So a little bit about that. Um, you know, first and foremost, this, this class uh, is primarily about you and your relationship with God. It's, uh, it's short. We're only going to meet uh, twice. We have two class two class sessions uh, this week and next week. Um, oftentimes in churches, there's a lengthy process where people go through a series of courses, sometimes lasting a year or two in their process of, of confirming their faith before they, uh, before they join the church. This is, this is very condensed because I believe that the, the majority and the crux of what it is that you're, you're doing uh, it's it's in your heart and it's in your your relationship with God and so while the time here that we spend in class or on the video is short uh, it's my hope and prayer that what you will do is prayerfully take uh, take the time to consider what's in the text and and to prayerfully consider your relationship and your current your current place and your walk of faith as you uh, as you take this this step uh, this this part of your journey in in joining in joining our church, so as we go as we go through this in the in the video segment of this course, feel free uh, to to stop and pause. Uh, I'm not going to give that time in the video, but if you want to uh, delve a little more deeply into that which is written in the book, just do that. Pause the video, go through that. Um, especially, perhaps those of you that are parents and you're working through this with your children, and and it may be. Uh, their first time that they're seeking their heart to make a commitment to to the Lord. This uh, this will provide you the opportunity to pause and, and to talk through them some of the some of the important aspects of what our church believes in and how it is that we base our faith on what it is that we that we are doing. If you turn in your workbooks to pages three and four you'll find there a very simplified explanation of this church and what this church is striving to do. There is this basic plan of, of God that we believe in here as a church, that it is, it is about Him, and it's about His goodness and His greatness. And in that goodness and greatness, He has a plan and a purpose and a mission for people. He has out of his love chosen to be our God and he so desires for us to be his, his people. And he has this mission of redeeming all of people back, back to him. And throughout all of scripture, we see how that mission of God is played out in this loving relationship as he constantly pursues his people. Ultimately, he would send his son to fully carry out that mission. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. The lost, that's you and me. We are lost in our sin, and we need, we need saved. We need a Savior. Part of God's mission is the inclusion of his people in, in that mission. And that's what church is. We are an integral part of his mission to the church. We have been given an opportunity to participate in this great plan of redemption for, for all of humanity. We all have roles to play in that. How we fit uniquely into this great worldwide church, or specifically how it is that we fit into this local church, Pleasant Chapel has eternal implications for people that would come through our doors and be touched by the love of God. We've been given instructions on what it is that we are to do, all followers of Christ. Jesus, in what is called the Great Commission, in his parting words as he left here physically from the earth, he called his people to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey his teaching. That is 
And those are our marching, those are our marching orders. And so as Pleasant Chapel looks to, to locally interpret those words in what it is that we do, we've developed this statement that basically talks about what it is this church is committed to doing, what it is that we are striving to do. And you can find those at the top of page, the top of page four. Let's take a, let's take a look at that. It says, Pleasant Chapel Community Church seeks to provide a place where all are welcome to connect with God, explore faith, and grow in their relationship with Jesus. We provide opportunities for people to worship and fellowship with other followers, support one another in life, and help those in our community who are in need, and then share the good news of Christ with others. It's what we are, this is what we're about. And inside that statement, you'll see a lot of action verbs that we are a church about doing. It is this application of our faith, this doing the things that we say we believe in. Look at those words. We're called to do this. We are about connecting other people to God. Ultimately, that's what we are about, bringing others to the faith. We want to provide an environment where others can explore and grow in their faith, and us as well. We also need to have the space and the place to explore and to grow in our own personal discipleship. We also are about worshiping, coming together in corporate worship that we do each Sunday. All of us uniquely coming together and in one voice worshiping Him. And two, then, we are also about being a place where there are opportunities just to simply fellowship with one another, to be able to relate and support each other and help each, each other out in our own walks of faith with the help of other followers of Christ. And then we are called to share this good, great news that we have. We are called to share, to take this word out into a hurting world that so desperately here needs to hear the good news, the good news of Christ. So when you join this local church, that's one of the things that you are doing. You are, you are committing to be a part of what this local church is doing, what it is that we have in those words says say that what it is that we are, we are about. We're committing to be a, an integral part of what this church is doing. So now go back over, take just a moment, look at those pages there, uh, reflect in, in, your, in your home with your kids, with your spouse, and, and then perhaps take a moment and look at the questions on the bottom of page four and, and talk about those and discuss those among your family. If you would turn in your workbooks to page five, there you'll see a discussion that, that talks a little bit about a basic pattern of one's faith progression and, and how one moves from being a person far from God to be able to be connected with God and then to be able to grow in, in the body of Christ. For simplicity's sake, it's kind of three steps. In the middle of page five, you see it diagrammed there. First, we acknowledge that God is already at work around us. He is doing His goodness around us even before we know about it or know about Him or know anything about His plan of salvation for us. He's already at work. And then at some point, we are confronted to respond to Him. He invites us to participate in Him and with Him and to receive him and to be brought back into relationship with him. And then the third step in that pattern is life changes. We grow, we change, we become transformed as we begin to recenter all of life to him. And this is this is an ongoing this is an ongoing process. You can read through these uh, steps more in detail but if you turn over to page 9, there's sort of a simplified diagram of how this 
pattern of how people come to be connected into the faith, how people grow in their relationship with God through their participation in, in the church. And again, this is, this is simplified. At the top of the page 9, you see those three markers there. God's already at work. God invites people to trust in Him. And then God develops you into the person that you are to be or the best version of you. The first illustration probably demonstrates how this works out for most people who are already in the church. People whose parents were uh, members of a church had, and had you and you were grown up in, in the church probably follow more along this, this first row at the very top of the page. You could have been baptized as a child and through Sunday school and other learning activities, Vacation Bible School, you, you learn about God. You learn about Him within the church services and you are learning of Him. But at some point in your life, you are called to respond or to react to Him personally. This is where a, a person makes a decision of trust to entrust their, their lives to Christ as Savior. And then at some point, um, that person would, would join, and that's where you are at at this particular uh, point in your faith journey, where you would join a local church. Once you were there, you find that there is involvement in what it is that you, that you do. There's continued studying, as the picture depicts there. You're learning. You're in Scripture, and you're learning about, and you're learning of Him, and your relationship with Him is growing. You're doing this in fellowship with other, with other people. It's not to be done alone. Worship and faith is a corporate kind of thing. And the bottom little person there depicts that, you're, that there's work to be done. We're, we're called to serve and to go and to do and to think and to think of others. As a result, then, you are becoming the best version of who it is that God has intended you to be. And so that sort of depicts a, a general pattern of those like myself who were brought up brought up in, in a church, in a Christian home, baptized as an infant, and grew uh, throughout, throughout my life. The second row there, uh, basically the difference there in that is you see that uh, there wasn't baptism to begin with. There wasn't maybe perhaps children programming that this person participated in, but maybe somewhere along in their adult life uh, they finally heard the good news of Christ and there was a response. There was, a, there was this, this entrusting of life to what it is that Christ offers in His forgiveness. And so that decision is made. That person then could be baptized, but again, the same process goes on. They commit to a local church. They uh, continue in their di discipleship to learn, to learn more about God. They do it in fellowship with other believers to grow. Uh, with them and to grow from them and to help others grow. There's the surface service aspect of being a, a part of a church that's reaching out and doing the things that communities need to be done because the needs that are there, the sharing of the good news through, uh, through those efforts of the church, that, that takes place and the results are, are similar. That shows a, a, a different pattern that, that happens with, with different individuals. The third row down there is very... Uh, is very similar. Uh, I stuck that in there to highlight the one piece that is missing there is you, you don't see the little icon there of the person being baptized and you don't see uh, an icon there depicting joining a local church. And I put that in there just to highlight the fact that baptism is, is not a requirement. Baptism is not a requirement for salvation. We're, we're called to do it. It is, a, it, it is something that Christ called us to do, but it's not a deal breaker. Um, you know, it's not something that has to be done for a person to be, to be saved. It is this outward sign that we're called to do, but it's, it's not required, nor, nor is church membership. So I put that in there so that we could see that, that this progression of how a person grows in their faith and comes to Christ and participates in the church really can legally and technically be done without, without those two things. The bottom two uh, I, is, is worth your consideration because being part of a church 
the bottom two are, are pretty negative ones. And I think, unfortunately, uh, they happen too often within church. That fourth one down shows an individual, perhaps as an infant, was baptized. They were, they, they were received into a church, uh, initiated into the church through, through baptism. And then at some point, they maybe have gone through a, a course of confirmation or catechism, and they're asked to affirm or confirm their faith. And so they make a public uh, response uh, indicating that they have received the forgiveness of Christ, and they even join, join the church. And this happens, this happens with a lot of people. That follows that follows a pattern for many people. Baptize, respond, affirm, confirm your faith, join a church. But then at the end, you see the icon there shows the individual sitting on a question mark because there's just a confusion about them. There's a dissatisfaction, a discontentment that they have with their, their, whole, their whole life. But what is missing there is they're missing out on those pieces of the transformative aspects of what it means to be to be a, a follower within the faith. They're not engaged in discipleship. They're, they're not in scripture. They're not in the word. They're not prayerful. They're not participating with others in joint fellowship within the church. They're not serving in, in the church. And so there's, there's no growth. They've done the talk. They've, uh, they've done that, but it's just, it's just lip service. There's a, an emptiness in their lives because they're not, they're not engaged with Christ in their activities that, that they could be and should be in, in their local church. The bottom one, uh, unfortunately, I think happens, it happens as well. We'll see people seeking out meaning. The first icon there shows a, shows a person who has, has questions and they think maybe the answers are found in church what church stands for, the goodness that church stands for, and some of the virtues and lifestyle things that are promoted by Christianity, they, they want to attach to. They want to be a part of the philosophies of what the church stands for. And they can become and be part of a church and learn a, a, about the church. They can learn about God. They can be actively involved in doing the things that the church is doing. But when it comes to the heart, there's, there's just simply nothing there. What's absent from that one is you see no response, no personal engagement with the offer that God has made through the saving work of Christ. There's no response there. There's, there's no heart change within that person. And at the end, it says, you know, they're ultimately lost because they have never received Christ as Savior. And that, I think, happens too often in church. And unfortunately, uh, these people can, can go all the way to the grave and miss out on what it is that the church really is all about. It's about what God has done through the Son and are then subsequent response to that. Take a moment in your groups at home and reflect on that. Look at that chart, talk about that, ask some questions, uh, go back a, a few pages before that and, and look, look over some of the descriptions of these steps. And then we'll continue on with our, with our study. The last part of this session talks about maybe what you're most anxious about. What's this, what's membership going to be like? What's it mean that, that, that I'm going to join the church? How, how's that all, all going to, going to play out in that service that we're going to have here in a, in a couple of weeks to receive you into membership into the church? Well, relax. It's it, it, at that point is it, it's no biggie. Uh, we're going to ask you to come down front. We'll do it all as a group. We'll have everybody, everybody come down. Those that are going to be baptized, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, and the rest of us that are going to that are going to join the church will do it. We'll do it corporately and together. And uh, basically, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you some questions that the rest of the congregation and the current members uh, want to hear you respond to. And that essentially will be it. And those th those questions are important ones. They are 
Uh, they are some important ones. If you turn your books to page 10, I'll, this highlights a little bit about what we will be doing during that, that service. So when you, when you come up, I'll talk a little bit about the importance of, of membership and, and, and what it means. And then I will ask some questions that you see there that are, are bulleted that, that you're publicly going to respond to. But what's most important to these questions, and that's what this time is, is given for you, is that these are no doubt a reflection of, of questions that you've already answered in your heart. God, just as we said before, has been working around you and he has invited you to participate in him and asks you to receive that which he is offering. That has been done in your hearts, or if not, that's what you need to consider right now before before we do come up front on Membership Sunday. Because I will ask you that first question there. Do you, do you confess Christ as Savior, and, and are you putting your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord? That is the fundamental basic question that my guess is you've already answered. Uh, that's that's why you are here. What we are doing this day is for you to publicly profess that to the rest of the church, so they they know that you know in your heart that Jesus is Lord. And then I will ask if you will profess your agreement and belief in the basic truths of the church. Uh, you can see those in the remaining remaining part of of this book. Churches are different. There's different uh, things that are emphasized differently among churches. We're no different from that. What we have found important and what it is that we want to be a, a part of uh, is in what we have uh, included in, in our bylaws. This is what we believe in, and this is what we will promote, and this is what we will teach, and this is how we will worship. Those kinds of things are in here. And so you'll be asked if you profess your agreement in, the, in those truths in, in the church. And then we'll ask, are you going to commit to God by committing to this local body of these other fellow followers in Christ? And then will you also acknowledge that you are vital to the overall health of the body of this church? That might be one of the uh, commitments that we asked to that was is most neglected in, in churches. Too many people don't in their heart believe what it is that they're saying there. You are an integral, vital part of this local body, and you are needed. And, and it's so important that, that, we, that we get that. Just s even small things that are done inside of church uh, could have eternal consequence. Just that, that smile or that word of encouragement or that hug or serving uh, food at, at a meal, handing out bulletins, lighting candles for worship service. All of those are, are, are very important pieces. And when someone's gone from the body, they're missed. And we all need to recognize how vital we all are and, and then to live out what we are committing, committing to here. We'll ask if you will pledge uh, that you will be prayerful, that you... Uh, your presence will be known in the activities of the church, the resources and skills, uh, these things that you have that are gifts given from God, you, you are pledging to be able to, to serve those, uh, to serve God through, through this church with those things that he, that he has given you. Finally then, uh, do you agree to submit to the spiritual authority of the local church? And essentially what we're saying there is, we have a spiritual side to our to our lives, and we need to hold each other uh, accountable to that authority. And that's just a, a big piece of what it is we do as followers of, of Christ. We keep we keep we keep one another accountable to the truths that He has called us to live to live by. So we'll close out this first session with that on page ten. I'd ask that you would uh, take some time in your group and. Um, and think about think about those things that you will be asked, moms and dads. If you're if you are working through this with your kids at home, and this is this is their first first opportunity to to individually think about receiving the good the goodness of Christ and the forgiveness that He offers, 
uh, from their sins. Now, now's the time to talk about that because uh, that's what's being asked in that first statement. So, so take a moment and let's assure one another within our, within our homes that we understand that which it is that we're committing to in this membership service. Thank you.